Hey, hey, Tumblr family. Tracy here from Trey Magnifique Boutique. Welcome to my studio. Okay, so here's the deal. I have discovered some knowledge on how to make these fun and fabulous acrylic paint skins for your tumblers, and now I want to pass on that knowledge to you. There's a whole lot I'd love to say right now, but I'm so excited to bring this tutorial to you. So without further ado, here we go. All right, so let's start off with our supply list. I'm using sheet protectors that you can get in the office or school supply section at the store, a hard surface like a piece of cardboard. You're gonna want some tape. You're gonna want some medicine cups to put your paint in, some popsicle sticks to stir your paint, and acrylic paint of choice. Brand does not matter as long as it's acrylic paint. You're gonna want some silicone oil that you can get at any craft store. You're gonna want some Floetrol that you can get at any hardware or paint store, a tumbler of choice, paper towels, and some water. So I'm just going to start by cutting off the edge of the protector sheet and then here momentarily you'll see that I'll open it and cut it in half. Having the two pieces from one sheet will obviously allow me to make for two separate skins and this size which is roughly the size of a standard paper so eight and a half by 11 will fit a 20 ounce skinny tumbler. Now I'm going to take some tape and just tape the very edge of that protector sheet to that piece of cardboard, making sure that it lays as flat and as smooth as possible. Moving on to prepping your paint for the pour. So for this part, you can use however many colors you want. I just chose to use these four neon colors, the blue, the pink, the purple, and the green, and then I'm gonna use white as my overlay. White and black tend to be the most popular overlay colors, but you can honestly use whichever color you want for that part, it doesn't matter. As far as how much paint to use, that is honestly gonna be dependent on the size of the pour that you're making. The most important thing to remember is the formula, one part paint, to two parts flow trawl. And so um, that's the purpose of using the measuring cups. Um, if y'all are anything like me, I like being able to measure everything out exactly. So that way, if I find success in a technique, which I have, which is why I'm sharing this with you guys, it can make it easily replicatable. So for the neon colors, I used seven and a half mils of paint. And then for the white overlay, I used 10 mils. For the flow trawl, obviously I'm gonna basically double that. So I'm using 15 mils of flow trawl in the neon colors and 20 mils of flow trawl in the white paint. And then I'm just gonna mix it up really, really well. And just in case y'all were wondering what is flow trawl, flow trawl is basically a paint conditioner. It helps thin the paint just a little bit so it moves and flows more easily and it also helps create some of the really pretty cells that appear which you'll see here in a few minutes when we get ready to actually pour the paint. Um, as mentioned earlier in the video, Floetrol can be picked up at any hardware store like Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace Hardware or any paint supply store.
Now I'm gonna add silicone oil to each of the paints. All it takes is two to three drops per color and then gently mix it in. The silicone oil can be purchased at any craft store. I got mine at Michael's. You can also get it at Hobby Lobby or you can order it online. I don't think the brand matters as long as it's just 100% silicone oil. So here's where it really gets fun. We finally get to pour the paint, woohoo! Okay, so as far as pouring the paint, you just pour it on there however your little heart desires. You can do it sporadically, you can do it in a pattern. It doesn't matter, just get your base colors poured on there. The only two important things for this part to remember is you wanna leave one to two inches of space up at the top of your pour area because that is where your overlay color is gonna go and then then once we have everything on here, we're gonna be picking that piece of cardboard up or whatever you chose to use as your hard surface, and we're gonna tilt and move the paint around. The other important thing to remember is that you want no gaps in between your colors. So you want all of your base colors touching. And if you find a spot that has a little gap in there, just use one of your popsicle sticks to kind of move the paint around a little bit and fill it in. Alrighty, so once your overlay color is poured, grab a paper towel, get it damp, not soaking wet, just damp, open it up, and then you're gonna dangle it in your overlay color, okay? Make sure that there's no air bubbles in there, you want it completely saturated, and then wait for it, watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna drag that across all of our base colors, and oh my gosh, look at those cells already forming. It is gorgeous already, I love it. Okay, so another fun part, you get to pick it up and you get to twist it and turn it and move it and get the paint flowing and oh, just look how much more those beautiful cells are forming, all of the colors are popping and this is why I had said leave one to two inches of space at the top of your canvas area so that way you can pick, um, you know, pick this up and move it around and then make sure it's completely covered. Do be careful that obviously you're not dumping all of your paint off of your canvas area. Just make sure that it gets completely covered. Once it's completely covered and you're happy with it, sit it down and do not touch it for at least three to four days. Ask me how I know. Um, it might look like it's dry on the top, but when you go to touch it, it smudges and I have ruined about two or three of my acrylic skins, which have made me so sad. So take some advice and <laughs> don't touch it for about three to four days. Probably on the safe side, push it to about five days. Once your beautiful work of art has had ample time to dry, grab yourself a cutting mat or a cutting board and an X-Acto knife and cut around the edges of the tape on all four sides. Now I'm just gonna lay the acrylic skin face down and I'm gonna very carefully, slowly but surely, peel away that protector sheet off the back. As far as actually applying the skin to the tumbler, all you have to do is line it up and press it down. The only thing I did to this tumbler was prep it by sanding it and wiped it off with rubbing alcohol. I didn't use any glue adhesive or anything to apply the skin. I just am lining it up where I want and then, like I said, literally rubbing it down to where all of the wrinkles and air bubbles are out. So it's almost like applying a vinyl wrap. Um, it just 
sticks to the tumbler and then whatever piece you have that's excess, you can just trim it off with an X-Acto knife. If the acrylic skin stretches on you a little bit so you don't have perfectly straight lines on the top and bottom of your tumbler, not a problem. Grab yourself a cup edging tool, give it a few good spins, and then peel away the excess paint. Then you'll have your clean straight lines. Once you're happy with the skin placement, seal it really well with either Mod Podge or a spray adhesive. The silicone in the paint will repel epoxy and you'll get fish eyes. As you can see, this one is very well sealed. There's no fish eyes. It's glossy. It's beautiful. And I love it. All right, Tumblr family. I love y'all. I hope you had fun. Catch you next time.